The following presentation is a gift from the team at Streamline Publishing, publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events, the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials in ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Today we have another great Chinese master for you, Wei Han Lu. And this one is called Twilight in Tibet. My name is Hui Han Liu, and uh, I <coughs> I usually paint uh, what I see, and because I my training background, I've been you know is the painting from uh, most of my time, and then paint, painting from uh, life models and and whatever anything in front of my eye, uh, and also I love. Uh, take uh, you know taking so many trips because uh, uh, and I so I'm to show you is the how to uh, do the painting from you know from my trip uh, and reference and because uh, I think when when you on the trip. Uh, you probably don't, don't have enough time to whenever you find a place to you know to paint, and so you pretty much you have to rely on your uh, your photo reference. And because uh, I wish, and you know, back to my uh, school years, and I had the you know plan of the time to go to you know very remote place and then sit down and find the real people, you know. In the village, and then sit down, you know, for for me to paint. But now I think is the time is is been changed. But uh, on the on those years, I think my painting experience, I think it really helped me to uh, to judge and to make a decision, and how to use the uh, the photo reference, and instead of the to copy from the from the picture. And so uh, I'm going to show you and how to do the uh, the studio paintings. And in another words, because uh, my painting is more about my feelings, uh, my life experience is on occasions. And for example, I've been to uh, so many different places, uh, uh, especially in most part in China. And I have been to, for example, in Tibet in, the, in, in more than five times. And so I love the peoples and customs and everything. And so to me, I think it's, it's the very uh, uh, inspirations every time. So that's why I always, whenever it's possible, I keep, keep taking a lot of trips. So each trips and I get a lot of reference. Um, 
so uh, next, so I'm going to show you is that, for example, the painting now you can see is on um, the painting is, I would say, is more, a bit more like narrative meanings. Because um, that, that feelings, and I, because I've been to uh, this, this place, uh, I think, for at least about a couple of times. And I really like the, the, you know, late afternoon night. And <clears throat> I want to show you is the, so that's, that's the pictures. That's pretty much my initial idea. First, because, um, if you look at the picture, I really like the jump of the idea is the, the customs and the light and the shadows and all the things going on. And so that's my initial idea. So I, I think I really want to do the painting based on this one. But at the same time, and I think it's not the perfect because a lot of things I think I do add it and then to, uh, to make some changes. If you look at the figure, so that's the main co collector. So these are characters I think I really liked. So I didn't change too much. So basically I keep the, the gesture and everything. But it, and, and then you look at and some of the figures, I think, and for the conversation and shapes, and I change it. So you look at on this one, and then I, <clears throat> I move around. And because I don't think this is the good shapes because it's the pretty much is the bat of the figure and face to the, to the viewer. So, um, I move around and then, <clears throat> so this, uh, this is the picture I took in another, another locations. Because, uh, I found is the, it's very difficult because you got the one picture and everything is perfect. You know, the figures and, you know, lighting everything. So I used the, that one before and this one is the initial idea. And then I think I need to add something, the figure to relate it to the relationship. So I, I found the picture for another location that I took and then I put in this figure and on the left side of the paintings right here. Um, and then the design, I think, is because the eye they can look at, that would be the focus, the center focus. So something I want to create, then the viewer to see the painting and then right away. And you can catch your eye attention. So, um, Something like in the main characters in second, and the third one. And for example, another one is the kids. I add the one more in here and then they can somehow, they can relate it. So like a group at the, at the unity. Uh, <clears throat> at the same time, uh, <laughs> I got a lot of pictures because I come to the idea. They, they might have to, I mean, not just sitting right here. So if you look at this one, so the ground is, there's nothing. So they're pretty much just sitting right there and just, uh, you know, just chatting and talking to each other. And so I created, so that's what I see on the location. But because at the time when I'm taking a picture on this one, it's not perfect. They happen just be there. But actually the, the, this fireplace, I mean, they're cooking something. Is I, I took the dead picture if on another time. Okay, another times. And, um, so I used this one to put right here. But at the same time, because the light is the difference. So you can see this picture is pretty much at noon time. And then the painting is more like a evening time. So I had to make the adjustment. So I change and then I had to create the light according to the the light directions. And for these two figures, so, and then I become more, develop my ideas. And 
The first one, I think, for the compensations, if it's without the figure, it seems like unbalanced. So too much empty space. And then I think I need to add something. That's my first thinking. I think it's, it comes from the design because the, in order to balance the compositions. And so I'm still looking for the, the reference. So if you look, look at this one, the figures. So I use on this one. But uh, at that one, I just uh, flip, you know, flip over to use the reference. Uh, and also this one, yeah, this picture. Okay, and <clears throat> this picture I think is perfect. The lighting, you know, it pretty much keep the the light consistency, and also it's the interesting figures at the same time because because my idea is is uh, those people is the grouping together. They also is kind of a family. They have the different age, different character, different looking. Because uh, it's, it's not a good to your painting, even though there's so many people, but they're pretty much almost the same age in the same days that they become like, you know, the boring things. So uh, I I add they have the different <coughs> lighting. But at the same time, I the background, for example, this one, actually the tent is just behind the figure on this one. But uh, I change it. I, I, I make the tent a bit more further. And I change the values. Um, so it's a bit more like a background. So a bit more, the value, just the, the purpose or the value just make to contrast with the figures. And... <clears throat> And also, I want to look at this picture again. I like the gesture, but if you look at the hand, and just happen, I mean, there's the hand just not, there's nothing is there. And then I, I make a, you know, they're just holding the, the bowl of the, the young milk. So, but because I need to make sure the gesture, is the right. So I I make myself just the uh, you know take a pictures so hold the bows. But at the same time I of course I had to call in because this is the man's hand. This is a woman's hand. So I didn't change too much the gesture but more just the looking for the light and the shadows and see how the hand is the holding the bow is tightening. Uh, <clears throat> So the once I get all those ideas is the you know is the to use all those pictures. I mean this is a common idea is the those pictures that you see in the uh is the pretty much on these paintings. And then I <clears throat> I come to and then I'm working on the small thumbnail studies, the small one, and then the the value studies. So the value studies to me is more, my thinking is, I think is more, uh, more abstract thinking. So it basically is the, in terms of the, the, I would say is the three basic value. So there would be light, uh, mid gray tone and the darks. So I really pay attention to see how the travel, how those different light, the placement. So see how far, how big, how small. So if I forget about this, I mean, before I come to the idea, this is from my trip. But when I come up the idea for the designing of the paintings, then my, I think my, my thinking have to switch to the really simple values placement. So more abstract. So I'm thinking is how, which light pattern, how much, so the painting, what I'm doing on this one, I would say the dark value is the predominant tone. So because the, the light in from the left to the right. So the darks, the part, 
is kind of on the on the foreground. So I really, my attention, I think, is the diangular line in here is kind of like a, you know, the long cast shadow. I think it's much more from the very dark and kind of like a, you know, to almost kind of like a graduate of faded into the space. And then the background definitely is the, the background is not as dark as the cast shadow. So more the basically is the, the dark accounts of the light. And then on this, the sky, I think it need a bit more dark gray tone. So over the paintings, I would say is the almost like 70% of the dark value to make the contrast that you feel very small. Uh, light patterns. Um, at the same time, for example, like on these figures, so I I did a bit more like a sketch. So it's based from the the the, the picture reference. So I want to see in how the basic you know the the characters, the bone structures, and how to create a more you know the strong cast the shadows. To me, I think the the value placement, I think, is really important. If on that stage, and if I'm not satisfied, then I might still continue to uh, to working uh, more to uh, find out the solutions. And because I think the painting is is not just only one. You had one idea, but you had a different, uh, options. So different options. Once you can, I'm not saying this is the only one, but to me now, I think this is the best one, the solution that I can pick. So that painting also, uh, first I want to show you is how many pictures that I, I use on, on this painting. So that picture, first, I think I really like the shape of the horse. And if you look at the horse, I think, cause the dependent horse is, uh, is the different from American horse. So you can tell. <laughs> um, first, I think the shape is a little different. And the usually the, the, the body, the, the, the body frame is not as the, the, the big as the American horse. Um, so the size of the, the head and compare the, I mean, the proportion. A bit more like a large, but what I really like also is I like the the different people. They put a lot of interesting stuff, you know, the carpet and and something around that is they create a very interesting and pattern to paint. First, my idea is okay. I think I got to paint the horse. This is a very nice one. Okay, almost perfect. So I don't need to change too much. But secondly, my idea is okay. I, at the same time, I think I don't want to just only about, I mean, just horse. So I think I might need to create a bit more environment and may someone, you know, have the working, you know, how about the master of the horse? So that's my idea. So I kind of like, uh, give myself a bit more problem to solve. So that's the good things I like. And then in the second, I, I said, I got to look in something, looking for something to get to relate to the horse. Uh, and then, and then I found a picture on this one. I really, I really like the customs. Um, but actually the, the picture you see here, it, it wasn't like this. But I just used the Photoshop to reverse, to flip over. Because, uh, I need to figure to the other directions to look at, look at the horse instead of looking out the painting. Because the original paint, uh, the picture, the figure is the face to this way. So it's, it won't work. So I flip over the picture and then cause I really like the light and the shadows 
and then interesting as a very unity. If if you look at the shape in here, the very the you know the unities. Um, the only thing I make a change. If you see the hand, okay, the hand is just the occasional. There's nothing there, but I create that. I make her arm is holding. Is a bucket, you know, had the water or something. So it indicate she is doing something. Uh, so that's the. After I put this figure, I think I I'm happy with because now the horse is not a lonely. So the master is beside the horse, and and then I'm thinking if I'm doing the you know this the size of the painting is twenty four by thirty, so they still have some space. I think if only the horse and the figure. And this part would be just too empty. I mean, it really comes from the design idea. So I'm still keep looking for something to back up my idea. And then I got a lot of, you know, couple more pictures, and then I found this one because I really like the figures. And also, I see the light is the pretty much close, you know, at At noon time, so I put her right here, and then I add one more, you know, kids. Just beside, and you know, is the kind of, a, and there's the grandma, grandkids, and mom. So somehow there's something have to, you know, um. To get the relationship, um, <clears throat> and then this picture is basically I use is just suggesting for the for the background. Because uh, I I I I like the shape of the of the hill, the mountains, and. And also this picture, I like the shape of the cloud.、Um, and then I just change the value. This value just too dark. So、um, how to change the? I mean, this is the idea just from the pictures, but I really change the color and the value. You can see it, for example, and this the much darker. You know, too light and too darks. Uh, when I, even though I use the you know the the photo reference, because I mean over years I'm I mean I always if possible is the painting for life. They always help you to make a right just a judgment when you look at all those you know the 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 pictures picture reference.、Um, I reduce the values, so the background needs to be more atmosphere. So feel it. So I'm. I pretend myself, even though I I I have to use the photo reference, but I pretend myself. I'm painting for life. I'm thinking if I did doing this painting on location, of course that's impossible. You can hold the horse still, the figure still, everything is still. Even though I mean you can find the right people, they can cooperate it, but impossible. The horse is the still there, but. It, I'm thinking is that if I paint on location, so what the value, the color, there would be. So I think it really helped me to to make a right uh, uh, right judgment. I want to show you is the first I think the idea about these paintings. This is the picture. First, I I really like the shapes.、Uh, the shape is very simple, so pretty much like a profile. And the light, I think I I took this picture is the very late afternoon. It's a very cloudy day, so there is no any directed light. But 
the value if you study the value i think very simple but very beautiful and since the horse is the dark value so the horse and then the figure you can see is a very interesting unity and make a contrast with the field pattern on the horse so you see a little green colors and so those i mean this that's why it makes me want to paint on this one so that's the initial ideas um at the same time even though i like this one but i don't just want to paint this one so i got a lot of pictures on this one because i I think they would be interesting if I put this picture and put together. So they kind of like a families. And I don't, I don't want to give any very specific meanings, what this guy is doing, why he's doing or something, but it just leave your viewer to imagination. <laughs> yeah. But what I like, I think is a very interesting uh expressions and good gesture uh also the light is pretty much the same as the one before but just the different values is already uh in a cloudy day and to me i think i just need to adjust the value because you see this are much lighter than this one and also, I got a very, very good close-up shot. So pretty much the same. So I usually, because uh, when I'm on location, I use uh, it's a Lycon camera. I had the I had a 400 zoom lens. So when I take a full shot at the same time, I zoom it as a close, close up. So very close up. So this shot it really helped me to get some idea, you know, for the details. And the face, you look at here, the cool light uh, right on the cheek. And then some of the value is already, you can see, interesting to contrast with the light on the background. So my idea is definitely I, I want to, I want the painting is, Something more, the figure is right on this moment. So that's the shape on the cloud. Well, I really like the cloud on the shapes and then simple on the sky. So it's, it's, it's in the, you know, late, late evening. So after this idea and then I, <clears throat> I started doing the, this is the charcoal drawing. So it's based on the reference. And so this is the, the second picture. This is the main pictures. Um, when I work on this one, my idea is I I, I'm thinking about, you know, how to make a, the placement. Uh, first of all, I think this is the whole unity, the horse and the figures. Very simple. And then the horse, I want the horse, the, you know, the head is overlap the figure. Um, at the same time, because I study the picture, if look at the picture again, uh, the grass, I think is too light to me, and uh, the value is too light. And become the horse and the figure is too profile, too strong, like a too graphic. So I tone down on the ground, I darken 
So I make this value is more close. Rather than you can see I make the adjustment. If you look at the picture, the picture is too much contrast. But I make the value is very close. Um, then later on, they are be able to play around all those edges. So that's what my, you know, the interesting part. The light background, all those shapes, the edges. So this, all those counter shapes. And then, uh, cause I'm, I'm thinking in the painting, I mean, even though this, I haven't started yet, but I mean, that's my, uh, I kind of have the picture in my mind. I mean, create this, that picture is going to be light background and then the edges and then all those unity and the shadow. Because I think the unity, there's not too much unity because I, I think the picture, it seems like to stand out because the, the ground is too light. And of course, the picture, the, this value is just like a white. So there's not any information. So that's why I, I, I bring the cloud a little bit more kind of like a, you know, because I need this, you, you see the horse is kind of horizontal. And then the cloud is started from here, the low, higher, it goes lower, a little more diagonal. And create in, in regular shapes. Um, and then I, I'm going to, to indicate that maybe the last minute of the sunset, there would be on the really cold, you know, in Tibet, even in summertime. I mean, uh, the, the, the sunset, you know, the color is the cool, but still maybe later on, I'm going to just put a little touch, you know, kind of like a little late afternoon light. So I'm going to, uh, so change, you know, give a little bit more interesting light on the head or, or on the cheek. Um, but now still in my, uh, I would say still in my imagination, but <laughs> I usually I think if I don't have this kind, the picture, I mean, the painting in my, in my head, then it's, it is not really excited, then, then, uh, I, I kind of, you know, feel like a loss, you know, is the, 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 the motivation. So all those motivations, I think is the comes from, first, I think from the really, uh, you know, the pictures and then from your studies. And plus, I think is that you, you really have to, any, any your life experience or your painting experience on locations, I think it really helped you to look at the pictures. You're thinking, okay, if in that moment, so what color or value that would be? And I mean, those, uh, makes me, uh, you know, very excited to, you know, work on the paintings. Now I want to show you uh, how to do the color studies for the studio paintings. And but before doing that, I want to show you and <clears throat> this is the color palette. Uh, I want to show you how the layout of my color palette. Um, <clears throat> I usually I like to you know put the white. There's the titanium white right on the corner. Uh, 
to separate. You know, one side is the, the warm color system, another side is the cool color color system. And <clears throat> when I start to, to put the colors and I start on the light, it goes to a little dark. So kind of like follow the values. Um, so the my first color is the titanium white. And then the, the, the next one, there's the cadmium uh, yellow light and yellow ochre and cadmium orange, cadmium red light, burnt sienna, burnt umber, uh, crimson, and violet. And on the cool side, and this is the serene blue, viridian, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. Just in case, sometimes I like to, you know, mix for some kind of like a gray color tone. Uh, <clears throat> the reason why I think I I want to do this, some of the color studies is because when I think the reference, uh, I need to make some change because I wasn't sure is the what color that uh, the palette that I'm really interested in, I'm looking for it. And to me, I think uh, the the painting, I mean, just like a different painting and a different mood and feelings. And as the painting, it the design, I think, by the, the color palette. So the color is to tell the feelings. This is the warm and cool, or multicolor tone. So I think each painting is really fun to try, just like a music. So just like a, each melody have a different theme. Let's see, uh, cause to me, if I always keep the same color palette, I think it's kind of like boring. Cause, uh, for example, like an evening time, it would be just a warm orange color tone. It's very interesting, nice contrast, but on a slowing day, on the cloudy day, and muted, you know, is the uh, uh, misty day. So each, because the nature, I think, is so, is a variety. So nature feeling is beauty, because it's, it's awesome. So to me, because uh, if I can catch at the such moment on each paintings, so that's what I'm happy with. Um, so usually I, I work on the color studies and I'll be able to forget. I'm not worried about any detail or anything. So my focus is on the what color is going to be for the painting. So next I'm going to do the, just the two different color studies. But first I want to show you. And so this is just the small size is the eight by 10. I think for the, it really helped me to eliminate a lot of unnecessary detail. So nothing, I, I'm not worried about anything, but mainly I just focus on the, and see how those color, they, you know, how they can work together. Uh, for my mediums, usually I just use a very simple. I use, uh, I just turp as the solvent. And also it's linseed oil or, or a galgate. Uh, and for the studio painting, it depends on what time. You know, if the longer, you know, is the, I would say it's the long term project. Sometimes I do the very major, very complicated paintings. I really prefer the painting is slow drawing. So I'll be able to keep painting is the, you know, uh, I mean, not completely dry. So I can maintain the painting is based on the wet, on the wet. Usually, I like to start on the the dark volumes.
So I got the just basic, kind of like a sim very simple shape first. So now I usually I like to, I mean, from the time to time, I think it's better to take, you know, to take a look, to study what you have done. And it's in about the, so the painting is just, I mean, you spend the time, but usually it's not only the time you spend on how much time you, you know, work on the painting, but how much time you also have to take a look and see how the relationship so right now I'm I because I just put these two is the kind of a, the the accents. So may so basically I think is the all the basic tone and the, and then the the values I think is pretty much is there. Uh, <clears throat> and so I think this is pretty much the job of the of the studies on the small one. So as far as you get the idea and. And this is just kind of indicate the light. Okay, this the some the shadows, and I see it now. I see the the how the relationship, the ground, and then the cloud. You know, on the background. Uh, on the actual paintings, also, I mean, uh, I will add it somehow the detail or some informations. But at the studies, I think it's not necessary. So the study, I think it's pretty much. Uh, I think it's it's done on this one. So I'm gonna do another, another one, and before uh, making decision in which one I'm gonna use it for the actual paintings. So on this one, I'm gonna do a little cool palette. See what happens.
So on the second one, I think <coughs> I <coughs> on the limit, the palate is the on the cool side. So more like a blue and and green. So when I do the the color mixing, so I pretty much use some more colors on the cool side and save some like a you know the warm colors kind of like a accents accents colors and couple more like a you know the green colors kind of like a, to play around like a accent color and and this yellow color I think I like to give a little more accents to contrast with the dark skin tone. So the value is is pretty much the same. So I didn't change too much the uh, the values. So may, <clears throat> maintain the basic value as the whole unity, the ground and the figures. Just uh, you know, slightly a little different different pattern. Uh, so now I I had to make a decision, so which one I want to go for it. On the left one, I kind of like. A, the relationship is something this kind of yellow pattern because the <clears throat> the, fo the the ground color is more muted if you I mean if you only look at the, the color it doesn't indicate like uh, any grass or anything but uh, relate to the horse and then the color on the sky I think still I think it work well on that uh, the one on the right, this blue color I think work well also if the some of the you know the cool color patterns. I added few more like a you know cool color reflective cool colors on the ground. So it's give me the idea. So later on when I develop you know when I'm working on the actual paintings, I somehow had to get ideas. So I'm gonna put a few more like a cool reflective light on the ground. I want to take a chance and and go for the right one. So the right one is kind of got a little challenge, but uh, but for the cool color, I think the blue color in, in place, I think is is kind of interesting. The the color palette is kind of guide the path for your paintings. It's kind of set the directions. Um, then you know when I set the directions so you pretty much you know it so what is the basic color that you're going to use kind of like a, to set the limitations on your painting so in general I would say if you're working on or maybe three or four different paintings that's what I usually do, you know, and when I have the idea, when I started, I do maybe just a couple more, the conversation first, and then working on this one. When I'm getting tired, and then I jump to another one. And then I can always keep my fresh eye. And always I can keep as possible, so each painting has the individual palette. So to set the different mood, rather than I just, uh, you know, is the... Just do the formula. So, so because I I think it's fun to give your painting have a lot of different mood and feelings by using a different powder rather than just the, you know, too familiar. I mean, you know in the counter from uh, the I mean, but your painting is not uh, just painting from any the rules any thing you had known before and then the same time you give you yourself a bit more freedom now uh i'm going to to do the i mean working on the actual paintings um first i because i used to use the charcoal it a real it's a wheel no, wheel no charcoal. Just to, to give a little simple basic uh, shapes on the canvas. The reason I another use the wheel no charcoal is because 
is a light, is there something wrong, and always easier. I can just dust things and then redo that again. Uh, so I, at the very beginning, I, I, I always looking for the very simple basic things and see what happens. Uh, <clears throat> the canvas that what I'm using is uh, I bought it as the whole row of the is the is the linen is the linen uh, made in Belgium uh, and since the this is the not the not the large size of the painting so the this you know the the medium to small size and I'm using the smooth texture. Uh, and I bought this one. I think is uh, I I use both is oil prime and acrylic prime, but that one I think is is uh, is acrylic prime. And and also I toned it. I just simple use some of the paint I left over, <laughs> you know, for my palette. So it's kind of neutral. Just uh, I mean cover some of the like because the white canvas is too the value and too bright so now i <clears throat> i'm going to use just thin a little paint to re refine the the under drawing At the beginning of the painting, I always like to use the Bristol brushes. <clears throat> now I, I pick a little ultramarine blue first and mix a little umber. But since I mix a little, just a little, so on. So this stage is just kind of get a little basic values. At the same time, I like to mix a little warm tone underneath in here. So kind of keep loose. 
So in the beginning, it's something kind of like a, kind of like watercolors. So, so far, that's uh, pretty much just like, a, <clears throat> uh, I just want to give myself the idea is uh, what the value and the basic shape. Well, that was Twilight in Tibet with the great Wei Han Lu. You can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. Remember, there's a whole video there, the full-length video that you can find. And there's a special discount code in the comments section today only. Make sure you look for that. Now, let's get right to our interview with Wei Han Lu. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazines. Today, I'm honored to have Wei Han Lu with us. Wei Han, welcome. Oh, thank you, Eric. Uh, first of all, I think I'm so honored to be in the wheel. And uh, it's because uh, we know for many years, actually. Uh, but I, I feel so grateful, you know, to be here. It is I that is honored. It's, it's nice to have you in the studio with us today. So, uh, do you remember when you and I first met? Yes, yes. Uh, we met in the, uh, I think in your house at the time. Probably. Yeah, in Lafayette. Yeah. And it was a beautiful memory. Yeah, By well I was living in Lafayette, California and you were living in? Concord. Concord, Yeah. very close by. Yeah. So we became, uh, for, for everybody's benefit, we became friends and uh, went out painting from time to time together. Yes. And it was a special time. Yeah. I learned a lot watching you. Well, yes, it was great fun. <laughs> yeah, it was great fun. Well, what I thought would be fun today is, is for the next uh, few minutes, let's talk about um, your upbringing, which I find, out, I find fascinating. And then we'll talk about um, how you found art. And then we'll talk a little bit about art and technique, if that's OK with you. OK. All right. So uh, tell us where you grew up. Well, I grew up in southern China, Guangzhou City. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, during the 50s, actually, the life in China is really, uh, you know, is the, I would say, simple and is a really undeveloped country. But I grew up in a very quiet and, you know, is the, I would say to me, is the, very peaceful, simple life. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think my memory is I start to just, uh, I love to draw, you know, just uh, do a bunch of the sketches, always a sketchbook in my hand. Now, was this area that you grew up in a farming area, a country area, or was it a city? Uh, it's in the city. In the yeah, city. Yeah, actually, I, I'm kind of like a city boy. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Well, you, uh, I remember you telling me um, it, it seems like there were several people living in your house. Did you have a big family? Uh, I do have a family. Is, uh, I used to live in, with my grandma, you know, my parents, my grandma. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I remember you telling me you had chickens in the, in the house. Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, because my grandma, you know, uh, she's from, from, you know, is the farm area, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, from countryside, and then moved to... To the city, because my my father, and uh, she was the teacher, you know, in the city. So we we all lived in the same family, small house, but uh, 
And my grandma is love to just raise the kitchen, uh, chicken. And because uh, chicken at the time in China is really, uh, really hard demanding because we cannot buy any, you know, in, in, the, in the market is really uh, shortage. And so my, my gran grandma is a raise, uh, you know, chicken and then get the, get the egg. Because the egg is not easy, we can buy it at a time. Right. Yeah. And uh, you used to write on the egg. Yes. And I remember by the time is the each new eggs, and my father just write it that day. Right. And then put into the jar, you know, just keep it. And then we always ate the egg if on the older one. So watch the day. So save the new one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there was no refrigeration. Uh, no, 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 yeah. Everything so, we don't have the refrigerations. And and how would how would the eggs? How would you eat the eggs? The same way we eat eggs? Do you boil them or? Yeah, boiling. Yeah, mostly. Yes. Uh huh. So was life difficult at that time when you were growing up? Well, uh, I would say if a comparison is kind of difficult, but because in China at the time is uh, it has been you know just closed the door, so we thought just everyone just. You know, just the, uh, you know, daily life pretty much just like this. <laughs> now, tell us how you went from uh, from living there to becoming an artist. I mean, joy, joy is my, uh, I don't know, is uh, I love to draw mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And just made me happy, made me happy, excited. Mm -hmm. And my father just gave me the you know piece of paper and the pencils, and later on I think he brought the watercolor for me, and so I love to go to the zoo and any nature anything. So I think I just love to draw. Yeah, I enjoy the shapes. Yeah, but I did not, you know, decide to become. I don't have the big dream. You know, whatever is uh, can be the great artist. Whatever. I think just it comes from myself, right. you know, <laughs> my pressure. <laughs> right. And so how did you end up in art school? Well, uh, in art school, uh, actually, it's uh, is kind of already uh, competitive in China. And because uh, we only had only few art schools in China by the time. And all the kids has to be prepared is the, uh, we call it a portfolio. But we also have the like, a, we, we do have the regional art center. And even though in the middle school, and we have done like art, you know, in different programs, like a drawing and music. Mm -hmm. So I was in the drawing program and just have fun. Mm -hmm. and, but it, uh, you know, go to the, you know, apply for the art school, then have to be, you know, prepared for the portfolios. So they only had so many seats available or so many classes available for yeah. students and it was competitive to get in. Mm -hmm. So you created a portfolio. Yes. And did they give you specifics what needed to be in the portfolio? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So were you accepted? Well, uh, it takes, because <laughs> after I, you know, from the high school, I graduated from high school. Because yeah. in China, we don't have that much choices. Right. So uh, aside is by the government. I work in the factory, a machine factory in about a couple of years. That was 1970. And what know. were you doing in the factory? Uh, I was just like a worker, uh -huh. you know, just uh, for loading and machines and, and anything. So you were assigned to that job. You yeah, didn't I have a choice. Yeah, I was assigned, yes. I was assigned. But later, and, and uh, that time is still, you know, 1970. And then I heard that because the uh, during the Cultural Revolution, actually, all the art school they closed, but later they, they like an open policy to accept the applications. But still, uh, I would say it's still very difficult because by the time they really, uh, the priority, the thinking is the, so each applicant is not just uh, determined is by how much good of your skill, but also they have to determine is the, uh, what's your family, uh, they, it, we call it like a family background checking, like a political, this is more like a political issue. Right. So then I was kind of in the trouble because uh, my family background is not 
that much, you know, favor. Well, your fa um, if I remember correctly, your father was a, a little bit of a radical? Yeah, my father actually, uh, my father is a very uh, decent man and then is the, you know, is the teacher. And because he taught in the Christian uh, school before liberation in China. So uh, somehow his the background is the, so make the Mekong got a little family trouble history. <laughs> so that, that was uh, someone who was Christian at the time was frowned upon in China. Yeah, in China at the time, in, and you know, it's not the, uh, uh, you know, the trust by the, by, by the government. Yeah, yeah, by the government. So that was a black mark against you in terms of getting into the school. Yeah, they against me. Actually, uh, I go, uh, I apply the portfolios and. And then, um, but the, you know, the school, the committee, and first I think they look at, and they want me to, because we need to take a test, examination. Mm -hmm. So the test is go, I think it's about three days in, uh, you know, for like a, a drawing, uh, the title of the creation, they give the title, you know, name the title, and then you're just uh, thinking about the compositions, you know, how, how the, you know, for, uh, so something like, a, the, you know, assignment. <laughs> so they wanted to make sure that what was in your portfolio, yeah. portfolio you could actually do. Right, right, yeah. But later in, and I think I had a very good, and teacher actually without her help, and I won't be able to get into uh, the art school, because because uh, many things is kind of a complicated issue. <laughs> yeah. But I think you know everything to me. I think I was lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I was so lucky. Uh, probably your friends that you grew up with uh, are still working in that factory many years later. That's true. That's yeah. true. So to me, I think that's the the turning point of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that opened up your life in so many ways, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll talk about that. But I want to talk about the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. because I think it's important. Uh, most people in America don't understand what happened in terms of the relationship between the Chinese and the Russia as it related to art. Can you talk about that? Well, uh, I think during the 50s in China and, and uh, we call it like a former Soviet, you know, and, at the time period. And I think China and, and, and the Russia have done a lot of the culture exchange program. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think most of the art education is the, the art school in China is more uh, influenced by the, by the, uh, by the Russian uh, academic systems. So if I understand it correctly, uh, the Chinese, because they were communist and they had a relationship with Russia, mm -hmm. with Stalin, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and Stalin had protected representational art in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, when everything was leaning modern throughout yeah. the rest of the world, he was focusing on representational art and really kept those techniques alive. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the teachers from Russia came to China yes. and taught in China so that they would be able to teach these techniques. Is yes. that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so like my, my teacher's generations, uh, they grow up at a time, and then uh, s uh, many of those actually they they learn from the from the Russians. So Russian is the professional and come to teach in China, and then uh, the China professional is the went to Russia and then study over there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the art school also we do have a lot of, you know like uh, uh, exchange exhibitions. So we see some of the art school, their student work, and then they see some of the from China's. Well, that was a great education. Mm -hmm. What was the um, education process like in art school for you? Did they follow the traditional academic uh, program they, they used in Russia? Did they start out drawing from casts and then to life, or, or did they do it differently? Uh, I think the system in China is same as in Russia at the time, and we have the, we first we have the, like a, we call like a three years uh, preparatory school for the art, art academy. So like a three years preparatory. So prepare, 
preparatory school <coughs> means the kids, they, after the middle school, if they accept into preparatory uh, school, it's about to take about three years. And so that's just to, to train you to be good to enough the to get into the other school. Yeah. yeah. And just that's the same way it is in Russia. Yeah. So after they get the three years and <coughs> trainings, so mostly it's the focus of the drawings and conversations, all those are basic and all anatomy. Then later they can apply if they accept and then they can continue to study another four years in the academy. And so you made it all the way through? Uh, but that was in the, uh, before Cultural Revolution and oh. after Cultural Revolution. So it didn't, it didn't change. But now they still continue uh, pretty much the same system. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the training in China right now, is, is it st being influenced by modernism or is it still very traditional? Uh, I would say in January in China, the, somehow they got the, uh, more loose, more, more modern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more modern. And the education, of course, they still uh, have the, you know, stress the foundation drawing. And, uh, but the idea, the concept, there can be more, I feel more, uh, you know, they stress the individuals. <laughs> right. So uh, when you and I met, you were teaching in San Francisco yeah. at, what was the name of the art school? Uh, the Academy of Art. The Academy of yeah. Art. Now it's the become Academy of Art University in San Francisco. Right. Yeah. And you were a professor there. What was the process of training your students? Did you have to follow the Academy of Arts process or did you implement your own with your students? Well, because uh, my I come as my, uh, to further my graduate school studies in San Francisco, because when I, because I was the teacher in China. And then, but I, I furthered my study in San Francisco, the academy at the time. Uh, but after, actually my, my major is the illustrations. 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 Uh -huh. You know, what I like is because uh, when I come at a time in academy, they're more modern, you know, in the fire department. So to me, because uh, I, my interest, I, I, I love the illustration and because uh, American illustrator had the good, they got a lot of good foundations and mm -hmm. all the, you know, and technical painting skills. And I think I, I, I learned a lot from there. But after, I think, after I graduated in a couple of years, I think uh, the academy actually, they, they change the direction. It become more uh, representational, more uh, traditional way. And at the academy, I think uh, one of the director in the academy is the Craig, uh, uh, Craig Nelson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Bill Mong actually they you know they they become the director, co right. director in FIR. Right, and then. Uh, and then I think that one day, because, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, just long story, make, make sure. Because uh, before that, after graduate, I've been working for the storyboard, <laughs> you know, for, uh, for about three years. Uh -huh. Yeah. But later, so when I applied, and uh, I think I, I had an interview with the, you know, in fire department in the academy. And, and, you know, Craig and, and Bill, they look at my portfolio, and then, yeah, they, they're happy, you know, so I, I was lucky that I got a teaching job over there. <laughs> so that, that uh, immigration from China to America was pretty difficult at the time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very, very difficult. So yeah. I was lucky because uh, when I worked in the Storyboard Express by, you know, uh, in about three years. So actually I did not that, you know, is to, uh, uh, you know how to say because the company they want me to ask me if I would like to stay, <laughs> you know, keep working on it because the storyboard is kind of very demanding, uh, demanding job. Mm -hmm. But uh, the company is actually because I don't have the idea because I learned a lot actually is uh, you know because I'm from China I don't have the much more. Uh, you know, uh, knowing about the pop culture in Americans, actually. Right. But the storyboard is that they, 
they relate to the advertising, the, the really American culture. So uh, then I worked for my portfolio because my company had the rep, you know, is that they present the portfolio because we had a studio artists. Right. Yeah, and then the advertising agency director, they liked my portfolio and keep me busy. And that's why and the company wanted me, asked me to stay. And mm. so at the time, of course, I love here and then because it's a free and, and uh, my family and then my son also in here. So that's why uh, the company is helping me to. So was the, your son was born in America? Yeah, um, no, my son is born in China. Oh, okay. Yeah, but when he came here, he was uh, about two years old. I see. Yeah. So you, while your, your wife and your son were back in China while you were studying here? Yeah, I, we separated in about a year, more than a year, when I was the... That's hard. Yeah, yeah, I, I come as the foreign student, actually. <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah, very difficult. Yeah. But so, I was really lucky because, uh, so they come a company with me. So for somebody who's new to painting, maybe um, painting and drawing, just starting out, uh, and maybe they don't have the advantage of being able to go to art school, um, what, what is your recommendation for them? What, what is the most efficient way for them to learn and, and to get the best education on their own? Well, uh, to me, my experience, I think, uh, of course, if you had a chance to go to art school, it's good, but, uh, you know, just the, like everything, <laughs> it's not everyone had the chance, and if not, but you just uh, keep, you know, just anything from your heart. I think the drawing is most important to me, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, do and draw. And then uh, always, uh, I would say to me, I think a lot of the good painter, uh, I mean, the, ac the education is important, Edu uh, you know, like ad academic training is important, but also is self-learning, you know, figure out, you know, is a learning from difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also is important too. It doesn't mean it's how many years your academic training or something. So just set the foundation, but you, you still be able to, you have to keep learning every day just from any, you know, uh, be more open your eye. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, just keep doing, you know, from, from your heart. Yes, well that's, that's, that's good advice. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about why you paint um, and why you choose the subjects that you typically choose. You and I were talking last night when you arrived, a little bit about how you like variety. Uh, I like a varieties. And, well, I think just comes to my personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, artists are, are different. Uh, what I like, you know, I like to paint, at least I can see it, you know. And I like to meet people. That's why I enjoy the trips. And, uh, and also a subject matter to me, uh, I enjoy the different subject matter, but uh, mostly is uh, I have to be you know in the life that I can see it, that I can feel, mm -hmm. and to me I think that's so important. Well, when you go on these trips, uh, you have these magnificent paintings of children and and families, um, people on horses, uh, all yeah. kinds of variety. Are you? posing these people when you're there? Or are you just taking random snapshots? Are you doing sketches? Yeah, I, I love just the uh, ready casual snapshot. And mm -hmm. or what, if I can, I just uh, bring my sketchbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mostly I think I like to catch the moment, you know, the people, uh, even though they can, you know, you ask them, they agree to pose for you. But when they pose, I don't think they're lost, you know. Yeah, because right. they're, try, they're trying too hard. <laughs> yeah, I want to be more natural and more right. casual. Right. I don't know. I mean, I, I consider, I mean, myself, I love the, the late 19th century. That's my personal. Late 19th century, and mostly like a naturist, mm -hmm. you know, just in different places, the people with the location. So I want to paint the people just be themselves with right. the environment. Yeah, and where have you not gone yet to paint that you want to go and paint? Or go and, and take pictures or sketches? 
Well, I think I still had many, <laughs> many places in my list. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, I think this year I will be going to another yeah, Tibetan region with American uh, artists, friends in September. Is yeah. that hard? Uh, is it difficult to travel in Tibet? It's, it's difficult if in the Tibetan region, yeah, is mm -hmm. the, you got to have to apply the special visa permit. And do you have to have a translator or do they speak Mandarin? They speak Mandarin, and, but uh, what I like is uh, when I decide, you know, the trips, is, it's not just like a tourist trips. I want to be more uh, culturally you want to, to get in, integrated yeah, into Yeah, integrate to, their, to explore their local culture. So uh, usually, I, I mean, I, I give them my itinerary, the different small towns and different places. So that's, I think that, that's the fun part, <laughs> you know, I had a chance and to then And to then you it. just walk around and, and meet people and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. just the regular people, just meet the people. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Yeah. Well, that sounds fascinating. I'd love to go with you one time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you also do a lot of plein air painting. I do, I do. Because, um, uh, I, I, I don't know, I like to, from time to time, I could take uh, a little balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I do studio paintings, but also I do plein air. Because the plein air, it helps you to have the fresh eye. Because uh, I cannot just, uh, I mean, if I do the studio painting, of course, sometimes, some of the paintings, if they're complicated, large paintings, I, I take a while, it takes time. Yes. And I may not be able to just, you know, is to get the fresh eye. So uh, if I feel bored, then I might just, <laughs> you know, bring here, you know, and then, uh, and then I go back, then I had a better idea. Well, when you're painting outdoors, you're, you're, um you're in a little bit of a hurry. You don't, you're mm -hmm. not doing a studio painting outdoors because yeah. your light is changing. Yeah. So you get these fresh brush strokes right. and, and the fresh feeling in the ears. So you're trying to bring those, mm -hmm. those feelings back to the studio. Yeah, yeah. that's so important because uh, when you're in a studio, you have to rely on the photo reference. But uh, you don't want to paint just, I mean, photo reference just for the reference. And, uh, but I like, I want the painting, it still be, looks like a you know, painting from life. Mm -hmm. So plain air, all those feelings, and always can bring the fresh feelings into the studio painting. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to learn about form. And, and yeah. if I remember correctly, you used to make your students go out and do plain air painting. Yes, yes, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I love, you know, is the be on location. I think I enjoy it because you have the, you know, you connect with the nature. And also is the kind of a, you know, challenge because uh, it's more quick, you know, decision making because mm -hmm. the light and shadow is changed so fast. So what has it been like for you trying to make a living as an artist? Uh, because we, we hear stories uh, from some artists who struggle. Has it been a struggle for you? Uh, what was it like trying to get established so that you could make a living? Uh, obviously, you had a teaching income, mm -hmm. but at some point you left that. Yes. Yes, I think that's a good question. I think that's really challenge for if the artist for, you know, for making a living is the artist. Um, of course, you really have to do your best, you know, is the, uh, the best work and you have to set your standard. Right. And be looking around, I always open my mind and then see the good work. Mm -hmm. I think that I always have to be uh, above your hand. Okay, hand technique, I think it comes from practice. So skill and technique is still learning, improving. <laughs> right. Yeah, no matter how many years. But yeah, I just always, I keep, uh, you know, is open-minded, be open-minded. And then, uh, and then, of course, is to never stop to learn, you know, paint from nature, wherever you can. Mm -hmm. And then uh, enter some of the shows, I would say, you know, save best work. Yeah, of course, you got to understand because, uh, yeah, as what you said, it's difficult because 
don't be afraid to fail because you you know show is uh, you know is the if you show you know up to the competition whatever any shows is the uh, is really uh, subjective right right subjective right. you got to understand right yeah the objective is yourself your standard but uh, don't worry you know just uh, you send out just uh, you think does your best work but if not accepted you know wherever and I think just be accept you know is the be humble I think that's so important and that's the way is that you always keep learning because uh, you know it's the last 30 years because I've been here I think I, 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 I'm thinking because yes struggle because uh, you fail many times and you reject it by the show and then you accept it and then you won the war and then your painting is not selling right, right. sometimes you, your war is you think uh, you know it, it's the best but you know is the people are just have different <coughs> uh, different feelings yeah of course people can enjoy it it's much happier but everything is not that but uh, I think uh, be happy be open uh, be humble how do you know when your work is is excellent you know that I think that's the hard thing is sometimes I'll be painting and I know something's wrong but I don't know how to fix it I don't know what's wrong uh, but I, I it just doesn't have that feeling of excellence how do you uh, when you when you get stuck like that how do you fix that problem I think when you're setting up you know the painting the idea <clears throat> uh, well, first, I think each painting to me have the limitations. The limitation means um, the idea, the visual idea, uh, you is impossible. You can get combine so many difference, because uh, when you decide the idea for this painting, let's say um, if uh, the painting is more just uh, you know on the face, for example. Right. Okay. So it can be the idea kind of like a portraiture. Okay, if this like this, this is what your focus, mm -hmm. and then uh, that may be the idea, and then the you design and then the color and everything have to relate to the idea. Right, everything has to support the idea. Yeah, have to support the idea. But if the figure give you the feeling you want to paint more mood and atmosphere instead of just only the the face. Or the you know, the likeness is, is if the likeness is not the main issue, then then you can figure out that maybe you know how you can deal with the figure, maybe the gestures and you know the background and and anything. So the worst part to me, I think, during the time I feel frustrated, and because uh, when I said the idea is the primary idea, and let's see if I want to do it, kind of like a portraiture, for example, simple. And then the middle of the painting, I went, oh, why I just change it? I mean, add something. I mean, you can try it, you can explore. But uh, many ideas, if they put together, sometimes I think we confuse. Mm -hmm. And the painting, uh, to me, I think is not working. Uh, make sure the idea is clear. Uh, do you have any advice on composition? Do you have a particular um, rules that you follow, or do you just kind of make it up every time? Well, I don't. To me, I don't have any rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always, I want to see the any options. Yeah, I right. always want to try if there are any options. Yeah, usually I do a lot of, you know, different, like a thumbnail sketch, you know, just a very abstract, simple design. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe, you know, it's a, you know, vertical or horizontal, or maybe square, you know, how my work. And, you know, is to see how the, the basic value placement Mm -hmm. And and uh, if it interests me, you know, and and then I, later then I make choices. Excellent. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you for your time today. I'm honored that you would come here, and I'm so looking forward to spending more time with you. Oh, thank you, Aaron. It has been uh, so much fun. Is is uh, yeah, in the, in the way. Thank you very much. Well, that was a segment from our video, Twilight in Tibet, with the great Wei Han Lu. Of course, there's a full video and a lot more to that, and you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. Remember, there's a special discount code in the comments section. Thank you for watching.